The Secrets of Technology is brought to you by the StarQuest Production Network and is made possible by our many generous patrons. If you'd like to support the podcast, please visit sqpn.com slash give. You're listening to The Secrets of Technology. Hi, I'm Dom Bettinelli, and you're listening to The Secrets of Technology, where we discuss the technology news that's important to you from a uniquely Catholic point of view. And joining me today on the panel are... Not Jack Perzini, I forgot to change my script, because Jack couldn't be with us. So filling in for him right now is Father Joseph Sund. Hey, Father. Good to be with you. Jack is a, uh, a new father, so uh, he's got uh, family obligations uh, tonight, so we're, we're, we're uh, letting him take a break and follow. Well, congratulations and prayers to, yes. to Jack and his family. Yes. Definitely. Get some sleep. And also, <laughs> a man who knows about needing to get some sleep after having kids, <laughs> Thomas Sanrojo. Hey, Thomas. Hey, Dom. Uh, a father of eight, by the way. So a father of eight. Yeah, that's, uh, you, you learn a lot about getting sleep after kids. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Folks, before we get to our show, I want to tell you about another show on the StarQuest Network you're sure to enjoy called The Secrets of Star Trek. You can find that wherever fine podcasts are found or at sqpn.com slash Star Trek. And you want to get in now because we're about to start talking about the new third season of Star Trek Picard. That's going to be a good one. So uh, let's talk about tech. Uh, I have a little bit of idea I just came up with this week that I wanted to share with everyone. I think it's brilliant, humbly so, uh, so <laughs> which is, uh, so I, I got kids, I got five kids, my, my wife, we have all these devices all over the place. And I'm constantly like, kids saying, dad, the thing is saying you need to update. Oh, what, how, can you help me with this update? And I realized, you know what? Everything updates, you know, we all have Mac stuff. So, you know, Apple stuff. So it's usually the updates all come around at once. I said, you know what we're going to do once a month? We're going to do family update night. I will sit at the kitchen table and you will bring me your devices. And while I'm updating your device, you can have some ice cream or dessert or some other nice confection. <laughs> and then we will, uh, you know, then when, when I've completed yours, you can move on and I go to the next one. And... I, I was I, I haven't done it yet, but the, this is the idea. I think it should this should be a good way, or or even just pay a bounty for every device you bring me. I give you money or you know something like a buck <laughs> or whatever. But just what some incentive to do it all at once, and I know everything's updated. I don't have to worry about devices being out of date and needing security updates. So that's my idea. I'm gonna try it out. If if you folks, anyone of you out there, try out this idea, you let me know how it works for you, because I'm really curious. Uh, I think, I think it's kind of brilliant, but that's just me. So just one, <laughs> one suggestion on it would yeah. be don't download. If you're updating a mass amount of devices to use your Mac to update it. So to download the update first on your Mac cord, mm. hook the iPhone or the iPad up to your Mac and update it through the Mac instead right. of updating it over the air. Right. Yes. This um, the updates can you can cache them locally. There's a way to do that. I have to look up how to do that. I may need to bring that up in a future episode because on a Mac, there's a way to cache your updates locally, and that way you're not constantly like, downloading gigabytes and gigabytes over the internet to all these dev devices over and over again. But you're only doing it once. So that that'd be something to think about. Yeah. Good point. All right, so our main topic is having to do with choosing a new password manager. Uh, the fact is, is uh, for a lot of people were LastPass customers, and as we talked about recently, LastPass had a major security issue where a bunch of the individual user vaults were stolen, and while the crooks, the hackers, didn't get unlocked vaults, didn't get the, the password that opens them. What they do have is access, <laughs> unlimited access to these vaults now where they can try, they can try to brute force them. And if the passwords, the, the main password was not a secure one, they'll get in. And so uh, the big problem isn't so much that LastPass got hacked, but it's the way they responded because they failed to alert people for a long time and then um, kind of 
low ball to the the response and it's a, it's a terrible thing it looks it looks really bad for the company and a lot of people saying you know what last pass has had multiple issues it's time to find there there are alternatives it's time to find one of those so we're going to talk about three that we have uh, experience with uh that you might want to move to we're gonna i'm gonna put some links in the show notes uh, about how to move from LastPass to each of these. So from we're going to talk about 1Password, Bitwarden, um, iCloud Keychain, and KeyPass um, for, as, as alternatives. There are others out there. There's Dashlane. There's, there's a whole bunch of them out there. But these are the ones that we know something about we'll, we're going to get talk about. So, um, Thomas, why don't you t- talk first about your particular uh choice and why this, you like it and and what you would consider to be some th- concerns when moving some things to think about when moving to it sure um so in keeping with the kind of theme of <laughs> the picks for the show mine's the open source uh, option which is uh key pass and I, I really like key pass because it is an open source option they've gone through several security reviews just to make sure that uh, everything works the way it's supposed to they keep getting clearances off of the security reviews which is good uh, the the big draw for me to key pass is that nothing is owned by someone else. So my my passwords aren't stored by someone else if I don't want them to be. Uh, and I can download the software on pretty much all of my devices. There's a lot of integrations that are built by the community so that it can connect to just about anything you want to. Uh, you were talking about browser extensions. There's community browser extensions that use key pass. Uh, the, so the really great thing is that it, it stores your passwords locally. You can set it up so that they work on the cloud so that there's only one, uh, aggregator for you, but you own that space and it's not like uh, it's going off to some other, uh, you know, like LastPass owns your passwords and it has this database that's going to be hacked. Um, which is, is a, a draw for me, but maybe a detractor for you. Maybe you want somebody else to handle that for you. And that's, that's reasonable too. So I'd say the the biggest drawback here is that it is a little bit DIY. Um, and when I say that, it's not DIY in the sense that setting up a Linux box is DIY versus getting a Mac. Right. <laughs> so it's not that bad. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> but but there are there are some considerations that you need to make. Like, how do you want to store those passwords? How do you want to carry them around with you? Um, how are you going to use them? Uh, it's not as one click friendly as LastPass. Uh, it, it seems to be. So that's another thing that you, you there's maybe a couple of steps to getting your password into something from KeePass, which I don't mind because the amount of time that I'm saving just by having a password manager, it, it, it it's worth it. <laughs> right. Right. That's a good point. And you know, the, when you talk about the storage, you know, if you need, you can store it locally on your com- local computer, which mm-hmm. if you did that, then you don't really have access to it on other computers, right? If you're just storing it locally. Um, right. So, but if you could store it, like, can you store it in Dropbox? Is that an uh, alternative? They, they have some, they have some methods for you to do cloud storage. You can store it in something like Dropbox. Um, you could GitHub it. That's how I ended up using mine was uh, okay. through GitHub and kind of connecting it that way. Uh, you can also put it on a USB and use it as as like a physical key. So you can oh. run it off of a USB and just use it as a physical key. That's That was an interesting idea. I haven't toyed with that as much, but I would like that because I, I think the idea of having like a physical drive that I can plug in and right. use my passwords from there would be really nice as well. But you really uh, but, want to have good backups in that case. <laughs> right. <laughs> very much, very much so. Yes. Well, and the, and the great thing is, is that you can, you can store different sets of passwords too. So if you have a professional set of passwords and then a personal set of passwords or your kids' passwords are all stored in one spot and then your passwords are in a different spot, each of those different libraries of passwords is, is pa- you know, password protected by a single password. And then you go into that library and you can have all of them open in tabs and just flip between them if you, if you need them for whatever different reasons. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's a really great way to kind of manage the, the mess that can be, especially when you have as many kids and users in my house <laughs> as I do. It gets a little chaotic trying to manage the passwords. I can imagine. And that's things, if you want to share passwords with like a spouse, mm-hmm. um, you, you probably can do that as well. You know, that, that, shared method absolutely yeah. yep. yep you can just export that library and drop it right over to them okay 
does um, key pass allow you to do two factor with like TOTP where um, generated codes and things? Is there a way to do that through it? I believe so. I use my authenticator app to, to be honest, I okay. use authenticator app on um, the Google authenticator app to do that, that sort of stuff. So I haven't played with key pass, but I think it does have that option internally. Okay. Cool. Good. Excellent. So key pass is a little bit more DIY, a little bit, but it's open source and you have more control. And that's what you're balancing. There is control and you know, that sort of sense of security that I have control of it. Uh, with convenience. So, okay, so that's right. pretty good. Okay. And Father, you use Bitwarden, correct? I do. And Bitwarden is also an open source project, but someone else, um, Bitwarden, is hosting it. Their code is made available open source. So if I really wanted to, and it would be much more DIY than Thomas's is, I could host my own instance of Bitwarden. I don't do that. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> So I use it through Bitwarden. Um, I have myself set up. I also have my parents set up on it. Um, they weren't ever using a password manager. Um, they had the same passwords that they had since 1999, and we needed to do something about that. Um, mm -hmm. And so the solution was to get them all on Bitwarden. Um, and so nice thing about Bitwarden is... Um, ties in with all your devices. So um, I have it working on my iPhone. I have it working on my Mac. I have it working on my Linux box. It works on my Windows computer. All the browsers have the extensions, so on and so forth. So wherever I am, just like LastPass has, it just pulls it up. Um, let's see. It also advantage is... Um, it has very easy with a two-factor authentication if you're paying the $10 a year, which is cheap. Um, you can, it automatically will put that two-factor into your clipboard. And so all I have to do when the two-factor comes up is control V, it's in, we're good. Okay. Um, so it makes the two-factor really easy. Um, and then... Everything's locally encrypted, um, and so, um, but I know you may be weary of that because LastPass said that too. <laughs> right. Well, and it was, it's just, they, I mean, part of the problem with LastPass is if it can, getting, giving away the encrypted vault in addition to potentially insecure master passwords. If you mm -hmm. had an awesome master password, you're probably okay with your last pass vault. Probably. But if you didn't have a great master password, you're not, you're not okay. And that's, the, yeah. that's the thing. I like that. Uh, so key pass is free, obviously, right, Thomas, that's it's free because it's, yes. it's like free mm -hmm. as in free uh, beer open source. So, uh, but I like that Bitwarden is inexpensive. That's if for the personal. It's they have a free level. They have a ten dollar a year level, which is nothing. Um, but even business is three dollars per month per user for a mm -hmm. you know a business one, which is pretty good. And the free level, let's be just be clear here. For most users and probably a large amount of our listeners, the free level is enough. Right. Um, if you don't get that two factor authentication stuff with the free level um, and what else don't you get? Emergency um, access. Emergency reports. access. Yep. So that's the, I can set someone up as my emergency contact. Um, and then let's see. Which for $10 a year, that's not, <laughs> that's, that's yeah. totally reasonable just yeah. for that right there. <laughs> um, and then I get one gigabyte of personal storage. So I can actually um, inside Bitwarden, I can choose, I can share files with, I believe they have to be other Bitwarden users. I'm not certain on that one. Okay. I haven't used that too much. They have a family plan for $3 and 33 cents a month or $40 a year, which covers up to six users, which that's, that's a lot of families. Okay. That, I mean, that's four kids. That's, that's, that's a lot of families. So, um, I mean, that would cover my family because I have several kids that aren't using 
<laughs> they don't they're not at the level of needing a password manager yet. Mm -hmm. So I mean that that's a pretty good deal for forty dollars a year because it gives you gives a uh, the admin mom or dad um, ability to administrate the other users and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty good. Yep, I did set my parents up on a free account, but they are able to have two users that share passwords with each other. Good. So husband and wife could share their passwords with each other on the free account. That's what my parents are doing. Um, it stops my dad from putting all of his passwords into a um, unsecure spreadsheet. Um, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and, so, and so mom has the passwords, dad has the passwords, but... And both of them are able to share those passwords with each other without having to, you know, exchange them through a text message or email or spreadsheet yeah. or piece of paper. That's um, like and so the uh, yeah. unnamed former organization I, I once worked for, which stored all the passwords for the organization in a Word doc on a server unpassword, you know, open server on an unsecured Wi-Fi network. <laughs> So that anyone walking by the door to the office could basically steal all their passwords. Yes, because churches have the most <laughs> yeah. well, secure I'm not passwords. saying it was a church. It would, You're but... <laughs> not saying it's a church. Sorry, sorry. I, I mean, it wasn't. But, you know, someone could probably guess from that, from if they know me at all, which or, I fixed it. They, I got them on a password manager. And so that's that's they're no longer insecure. But gosh, that was. That's had to be the first task at almost every parish I've been at is to have the workers change the passwords on their desktop computer from something that's not so obvious that anyone in the world could guess it. Right. Yeah, exactly. Great. So my password manager of choice, as I've said many times, is 1Password. I've used it for years. Uh, I continue to use it. I use 1Password for families. Uh, a big reason I do that is I have the Eero Wi-Fi router system. And as part of Eero Plus, I get free 1Password for families, as well as free mm -hmm. malware bytes and something else. Uh, oh, uh, free VPN. So uh, it's a pretty good system you know so but even if it wasn't free i'd still be using it because i love one password um they've they've changed a lot over the years they have a new their new one password aid some people didn't like it because it forced you into the cloud you used to be able to store your vaults that's what they call their library of passwords you can have separate vaults for different purposes um you used to be able to store your vaults like on a in a dropbox or someplace else but they forced you into the cloud Partly because they, it's easier for them to manage and secure it. That's that's mm -hmm. a big thing, and they you get all of these administration tools that for administering and for recovering, frankly, your passwords. If if you have a uh, lose your if someone in your your family organization loses their master password, you wouldn't be able to do all that if it wasn't you know centrally in the cloud. Um, so uh, it uh, does that. It does the two-factor built in so you can have it store the two-factor codes. Some people say you shouldn't put your passwords and your two-factor codes in the same place. That's kind of defeats the purpose of the two-factor to have that separation. Uh, maybe uh, I, I have most of my two-factors there. Some I keep still in a separate two-factor app called Authy. And I actually use um, hardware and uh, security keys as well for some things, uh, the most important things. And uh, so the one password is can be a little more expensive than the others. It's definitely more expensive than those two if you're not getting it for free with Eero Plus. Um, but uh, I have like a shared vault with my wife. We can move passwords back and forth from our personal vaults to the shared vault. I can store, I store all kinds of other information in there, like social security cards and our uh, driver's licenses and um, other stuff like, um, or like health cards, like our, our health insurance cards. And you can put files and other things in there. I keep a lot of stuff like that in there. Uh, you can secure notes. So sometimes stuff that isn't exactly a password, but it's, Secure information like um, API keys, 
I put in there, you know, because mm. uh, API key is is like a password. Uh, someone got it, they would be able to, to access things. So uh, I really enjoy one password for that. And of course, it's everywhere. It's in every browser, on every phone, every operating system. It's it's everywhere. Mm-hmm. It's a major. They're a major company now. They're used by Fortune 500s and stuff. So they're big and they're not going anywhere. Um, and the the frankly look. <laughs> I'm sure they're looking at what happened to LastPass and saying, okay, how do we not be them? <laughs> right. Because LastPass has basically destroyed their business by their practices. Uh, so that, that's a big deal. They're so, going to go the way of MySpace. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Um, another one that Mac users could, you know, iOS users and Mac users could use is um, Apple's iCloud keychain. Although it's tricky. So for all of these, if you want to move from LastPass to another password manager, you have to get your passwords out of LastPass. And there's each, every one of the links I give you will show you how to do that. But it's basically you're exporting um, a CSV file, a comma comma separated file, uh, you know, um, values, comma separated values file. It's basically in plain text, which means at that point, your vault is entirely unencrypted. Okay. So it's a, it's in clear Anyone gets a hold of that, they have everything, which they may already. Uh, so, um, so, so you download that. Um, one thing you want to make sure you do, though, is before you download that to your device, turn off backup software, like anything that automatically backs up to the cloud, because mm-hmm. you because you don't want that being stored anywhere else. You 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 don't want that going anywhere. Then you uh, import it. They'll, each of these different apps will have an import function to just import all of that stuff into a new vault and, you know, or, or whatever the, 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 they call the storage area in the password manager. And then after you know, make sure that it's all there, you go back and you delete your last pass account, turn it off. And then you change all your passwords. Just, I mean, I, I know it's a pain. I know you don't want to do it. You, but do it. <laughs> you need to do it. You have you, to. You just need to. In, in fact, you, you might even want to just skip the step of trying to download the CSV. Just get a list of the sites that you use LastPass for at any point and go through them one by one and say you forgot your password and yep. have whatever you choose generate a new password for. Yes, that's a good point. I would wait until you've done most of those before you delete your LastPass account. Though, right. Because you might have some that um you maybe you change your phone number this that and the other mm-hmm. and you need to have yeah different yeah. access to change things um and i've been burned on that before so be careful Good with save your email passwords for last that's, <laughs> <laughs> yes do that's probably you, the best bet yeah in fact do the less go from less important to most important start with the least important and move to the most important and your email account is your most important even more than your bank account quite honestly because mm-hmm. your email account is going to be the it's the 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 hinge the linchpin for everything because your email address is the way that these all of these accounts are going to connect with you so your email account you know this is a general practice a security practice you keeping your email account secure is probably the most important security practice you can do um more than anything else. So um, do that one last and make sure that's a very secure password, please. Um, And make sure your spouse is being safe and secure as well. It does you no good if you use a great password and your spouse who's sharing the vault with passwords with you is using like their birthday or, you know, Panda one, two, three, four, or some silly thing like that. You know, if they're using a really bad password, that's, that's your hole, your security hole. That's where they'll get you, not Mm -hmm. through your account. So just something like that. One other piece of advice, especially on banking with emails. um, This is not so much to last pass stuff, but just making sure that it's not a good idea to have my banking pass, my banking account on the same email address as all my publicly available things. That's a good point. Use a, even a dedicated separate email address just for that. Yeah. That's, that's a really good point. Um, yeah. So one thing that a wrinkle in this, if you're going to, uh, cause I was started talking about the iCloud keychain, iCloud keychain via Safari, you can't import a C, import a CSV into iCloud keychain. So you need an intermediary. 
So what is Apple recommend? Uh, well, what Apple doesn't recommend this, but some, uh, I think this is the verge. That's the link we have. They recommend Firefox or Chrome both have password managers built in. So they recommend downloading the CSV. If you're going to do the CSV, importing it into either Firefox or Chrome's password manager. And then Safari has a way to import from another browser. So you'll, you'll do that. Then you'll go back and, you know, delete it out of the, the browser you, that was the intermediary. So there's, that's one thing that would be the, the wrinkle with iCloud keychain importing and moving mm. to that. Tim Cook needs to get on top of that one. Doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. yeah, they do. Yeah. It's a, that's a, if they want people to use iCloud keychain, they got to make it a little better uh, up to par with the other ones. So when choosing a password manager, some important things, it, it should let you install apps on, you know, the password app on multiple devices, including mobile, whatever your mobile is, make sure it hits. That's what you want to make sure is it, it's your style. If you're a PC person, make sure it works on Windows. If you're a Linux person, make sure there are Linux clients. So that's the mm-hmm. important thing. Um, make sure. And it, for Android, be, be careful of the, uh, of the actual flavor of Android too, because there are some that, that yeah, aren't mm-hmm. as up to date. And so if you have one of the newer phones, but they haven't created an app for that newer phone, you're not going to be able to use it. Good point. Excellent. Um, it make sure it, it can generate secure passwords for you. Actually, um, there is a great website for generating wet passwords. And I'm just trying to think of, uh, I think it's yes. It's xkpassword.net. So yeah. it's xkpasswd.net. And it will generate any kind of password you want. And, and you can put in all these different variables on, you know, how you want it to generate the password. And um, it's inspired by the a great comic from the, the, the comic, the online comic XKCD about <laughs> uh, password <laughs> Uh, vulnerability and how to create a hard, hard to guess password. And so uh, that's what inspired it, but it will give you all kinds of different passwords uh, for all kinds of different purposes. Uh, so if, if your password manager doesn't have one built a good password generator, it, this would be a nice way to do it too. It looks like all the ones that we've mentioned um, today do have a generator. in. Yes. Them. Yes. A, a mm-hmm. decent one will have a generator in it. Um, so, um, what else? Uh, it should let you add other data as well. That's important. And of course it should have a, access, have a way to have browser extensions for all your browsers on PC and mobile. Cause you know, you, you often log into websites on your phone's browser. So you want to make sure you're able to do that. I love the fact that one password, I can't remember, I can't believe there were days when you couldn't do this, where you can, it will enter in apps when you want to log in inside an app on your phone. You used to have to like go back and forth and copy from, from the app, mm. from one password mm. and go back. With, oh, and remember when you, before the, the days before you could actually copy stuff on your phone, like, how, 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 how did they yeah. ever let that happen? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember still laboriously t- typing from a screen as a password. But now it's, it's just, you can have it go right into the, br- the, the app and put it right in. There are still banking websites that disable password managers and copy and paste of passwords. Yep. Mm-hmm. So there are some that you still will have to pull it up on your screen and manually type it in. Oh, um, so annoying. And Bitwarden also, um, like one pass, um, can't like one password, um, can tie in with the face ID and all of that to enter into your apps. Um, yes. Through. And I'm sure there's something equivalent on Android. Um, I'm not well vo- versed in Android, but I'm sure it works yeah. on the equivalent for Android. Fingerprint recognition. or So, um, and then in the future, there's the new, we've talked before about pass keys is a new technology that's coming. And one uh, password is already committed to being there for pass keys. It's a way of having it a kind of, two-factor authentication through a device so that your basically your phone becomes like a hardware encryption device. Um, that's a, a very simplified version of that, <laughs> but, uh, and hopefully other, all the others will be following suit as well. I'm sure Bitwarden will be there and, and hopefully KeePass because it's open source will also be there as well. So 
and Google's already piloting it. So if anybody's using Google, when um, you log into your account occasionally, I mean, if you're like me and you always have your browser just dumps everything when you leave. Yep. Uh, I always have to log back into my account. And when I do that, it asks me to, for 2FA. And at this point, like it can do Bluetooth on my phone. It can do plug on my phone. Mm -hmm. It can just have me click a button. So I'm really looking forward to the day when that's kind of the way yeah. everything's signing in. Yeah. Whenever you log into Bluetooth uh, to, to Google uh, for on the, on my, on my iPhone, I always have to go to a Google app, open it up and approve the uh, mm -hmm. the login yeah that's true that's that's sort of the way it will work um something like that it's similar to the way like with my um apple watch if i'm yep sit down at my mac and i have my watch on it will automatically unlock for me right if yes um the new ios 16.3 actually now has um it, it, it can you can use the hardware security keys so like yubikeys from yubico um, you can use those as a, as a security unlock on it. And in fact, the, it will work with the NFC ones, which is really nice. So, um, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. We should talk about that in a, in a, in a future episode because it's a, I've, I, ha I use hardware encryption keys. Um, and, uh, they're, they're really great for, for that. Uh, they, they really are provide you with some security that you wouldn't otherwise have. That's a, that'd be a fun episode to, <laughs> yes yeah so folks if you have any questions about moving to a one, uh, a new password manager or which password managers to choose or using any of the ones we've talked about you know be sure to drop us a line uh, technology at sqpn.com or go to our discord server at sqpn.com slash discord and you know check uh, drop a question in the uh, secrets of tech channel that's there or you know however you can get a hold of us uh, we'd be happy to uh, to answer any questions all right so let's move on to take a moment to thank our patrons who make it possible for us to create the secrets of technology including peter o michael h thomas h Marco P and Father John R. Their generous donations at sqpn.com slash give make it possible for us to continue the secrets of technology and all the shows at StarQuest. And you can join them by visiting sqpn.com slash give. This StarQuest show is brought to you by Tim Shevlin's personal fitness training for Catholics, providing spiritual and physical wellness through personalized nutrition, workout and prayer programs, and daily accountability check-ins. Learn more by visiting fitcatholics.com. So let's uh, talk about some of the uh, headlines that are interesting right now. There's a, this article I want to talk about. It, it comes out of India, and it's from an Indian uh source it's an indian uh, news website i haven't seen the same data from an american site so i'm I, i'm not sure how reliable it is but it it seems kind of if the if the exact numbers aren't aren't good the in, the information is good which is this uh, article claims that americans were tricked into losing 10 billion dollars by illegal indian call centers in 2022 so those those scam calls that you get, you know, trying to sell you a extended warranty or various other things like that. Um, the, the very same call centers that the YouTuber Mark Rober, what's his name? I just Mark Rober, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Okay. That <laughs> for, sounds a second, right. <laughs> for a second there, I thought, it, wait a minute, is that right? No. Yeah. Mark Rober, he's a big YouTuber and he did this whole expose of these, uh, um, Indian call centers that scam people. And, uh, so, they are, they take a lot, a lot of it is, is they scam elderly folks who aren't used to a lot of the tech and they are trusting. So then in the, according to this report, elderly U S citizens above the age of 60 lost over $3 billion last year. It's just the, the numbers are staggering. It's gotten to a point where the FBI now has permanent folks over at the U S embassy in India dealing just with this. Uh, you know, that's, that's a bad, in the Indian government is starting to realize we're starting to get a reputation here. That's bad for business for us. We, we can't have this mm -hmm. and they've started to crack down. So uh, what do y'all think of this uh, story? And the, 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 the numbers are kind of staggering, frankly, They're hard to believe. It's not surprising though. I mean, I, I get calls and, and they, they have perfected the art 
with it really because it's it's that call that comes in that says this charge for one thousand four hundred dollars on your amazon account is going to be approved unless you and it's like whoa wait and when you if you don't gut check and you don't stop yourself you will get wrapped up in their stuff really quickly and exactly what's going to happen is you're going to call that number you're going to push one and it's going to connect you to the call center they're going to get you're going to get somebody that's going to fast talk you and say well we need to fix this right now here's what's going to happen and then if you could just give us a, a you know the the routing number for your bank account we can just send the money right back to you and you're done that's it right <laughs> and and they'll they'll manipulate you they'll talk around it they'll get you to to convince you they'll get you turned around in your head and you're not sure which way is up i mean they're really They've really perfected the art of of scamming people. There is uh, YouTubers who will, th they do this thing where they, they take in these calls and their goal is to keep these scammers on the line for as long as possible because they're, they're going to entertain the audience while they're doing this. But also um, they, their philosophy is, is if the longer I keep you on the line, the fewer people you're scamming. You know, if I can, right. if I, if I can do that. And so, uh, and by watching how the scammers work and the script that they follow is really, it's, it's a level, they're both um, gaslighting, they're bullying, they're, you know, they're kind of negging, you know, you, you want, mm -hmm. you, you want to, it, it plays on people's natural proclivity to want to be helpful and to not, and to have someone like them, especially strangers. and. That and and then to play on fears as well, especially mm -hmm. fears of the things you don't understand, and that's what's really scary. And I, you know, I really fear for, especially older folks, who are um, a little more vulnerable, maybe cognitively not as sharp as they used to be. Mm -hmm. And that I, I mean, I'm not sure how you you, you help them unless you, you 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 train like your elderly parents. If anyone ever calls like for something like this, hang up and call me and I will handle yeah. it or something mm -hmm. along those lines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's really the best way to do it, honestly, because, uh, you know, and that's what that we, we had a moment like that today where uh, my wife got a call from one of these scam things and we brought it up with the kids and we said, look, here's here's the deal that nobody's going to call you for that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's that's gonna your bank's gonna go. Hey, that money just came out of your account, and you're gonna have to try and figure out why, uh, if that really happened. But you you need to just take a minute and think about it, and then go. Okay, let me go right back to the source. Hang up the phone. Go right back to the source. And right. if you don't know the source, or if you're not sure about the source, or if you're technically not proficient in the source, get somebody who does, and have them help you work through it. Right, right. There, there's a really common one right now with. Um, they call telling you that they're Microsoft and you're antivirus um, mm -hmm. and all of that. I had it come up when I was um, exposed to COVID in isolation. So this um, poor person got got a hold of me when I really was bored and had nothing else to do. So <laughs> I, ha I had about a fun hour on the phone with them acting like I was following everything they told me to do. Um, <laughs> but they... Yeah, they'll sit there. And so what he did was he tried to get me to do a team viewer with him um, yeah, mm -hmm. and give him full control of my computer um, so that he could, quote, update my antivirus definitions and everything for me. Um, what he really was probably going to do is implant some type of file or something on my computer right? Um, yep. to gain access and to gain a permanent access um, to be able to capture certain information from me. Probably install a keylogger to get your passwords. And yes, mm -hmm. that was, that's what they would do. Which I will say the turn of that is actually calling for tech support. I am so leery of everything. <laughs> <laughs> that a tech support person tells me to do. It's like, no, no, I, I do not want you to take control. I just yes. walk me through this. This is what I'm seeing on my screen. Just tell me what the next step right. is. Yes, you know, my tech, my pick of the week last time I did a show that was that um, Windows Assistant thing. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't mention the good caveat to that would be unless you have physically met the person yes. who are you giving mm -hmm. permission to take control of your computer? Yeah. Don't do it. Yes, exactly. Right. right. 
you know, and Thomas, you bring up a good point. It's not just the old, uh, the older folks in our lives that we need to, you know, teach about this. We need to teach our kids. It's very important mm -hmm. to always take the opportunity to, 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 you know, when, if you're, if you're there with your kids say, Hey, look, this is what happened. Okay. I got this call. It said this. And then, you know, and I, I sometimes do this with my kids. I quiz them. Why do you think I'm suspicious of this? What, what, right. what would you do if the, you got this call and to, to help train them to be good practices of cybersecurity. This is the world we live in. You have to be, you have to keep yourself safe and we have to train our kids to be safe with this stuff. And this is a really good point. And to, to, to teach them, you know, why is this a bad thing? And let me first, a, a general rule, no legitimate business will ask to be paid using gift cards <laughs> ever. <laughs> no government agency, no legitimate business will ever ask you for a gift card. No priest will ask for you to give him gift cards. That's another scam that's out there. I will ask you for cold, hard <laughs> cash in the basket. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, um, so, yeah, that so that it. it there's ten billion dollars a year worth of people getting scammed. Still, this is a this is a problem, and so we need to, you know, partially we need to help fix it by helping the people in our lives uh, fix it. All right, this next headline is a great headline. Oh, I I love this this story because I might want to go work for this company. Shopify tells employees to just say no to meetings. Uh, at the uh, after they came back from Christmas break. Uh, Shopify told all of their employees that they were conducting a calendar purge, removing all recurring meetings with more than two people in perpetuity while re reaffirming their rule that no meetings at all can be held on Wednesdays and big meetings of more than 50 people can only be conducted within a six hour window on Thursdays with a limit of one per week. Um, and, and workers are encouraged to decline other meetings and remove themselves from large internal chat groups. Yes. <laughs> I so wish this was in, in, in effect at previous jobs. Uh, Shopify you... is my spirit animal. <laughs> <laughs> That's a business that understands how things get done. Yeah. I, other, other than like, really, like, I need to sit down and walk you through this. Uh, there, there's just nothing that a meeting is going to accomplish that a, an yes. email can't, you know, has, I mean, have you guys both had experiences and I'm sure father, you've had this experience in the church of sitting down in a meeting and at some point saying to yourself, this could have been an email. <laughs> this mm. could have, this, yeah. I bought my last, um, or no, I, I have that mug. I bought uh. my last pastor, a mug that said, um, this is my meeting mug. When it is empty, the We're meeting done. is over. <laughs> That's good. Um, and then I have a similar mug that says, this meeting could have been done by email. <laughs> well, I mean, I've also like, you know, the sort of thought to myself, why didn't you just email me your presentation deck or, you know, your PowerPoint? Because all mm -hmm. you're doing is reading the cards to me. Like there's no... right. So oh. often I've sat through meetings and just sat, thought to myself, why are we spending all this time doing this instead of me doing my job? And part of the problem is managers need to feel like they're managing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We have a meeting for the sake of having a meeting. Right. And this isn't necessarily technology based on this, but if I'm having a meeting, one thing of basic management is to always, always have an agenda yeah. <laughs> and it forces you to make an agenda so sometimes we have staff meetings and we sit down and we're typing up the agenda and we look at it and we say guess what there's not enough stuff to manage a meeting right now right yeah and just, there's the email you just wrote the email exactly. <laughs> just, just just send that <laughs> and there are plenty of times especially with a recurring meeting where you should just say you know what? we don't need a meeting this month like there's nothing to talk about so let's just move mm -hmm. on we'll email any, any information that needs to go out and you know the the core the, the flip side of this though is the bosses have to make sure that the employees thus communicate with each other outside of the meetings like I could get rid of meetings, but if people don't respond to my emails, 
I'm going to have mm-hmm. to call a meeting. Like if I send you an email and I need your response, you need to respond to me. You need to, you know, to be available. So there has to be that ability, that back and forth that the meeting is no longer providing um, that you have, yeah. people have to commit to. I'd caveat on just meetings of, especially in areas of both education and ministry of there being things that are continual um, that I have to talk with teachers about kids development or, you know, Mm -hmm. two priests are talking together about ministry things that there needs to be a deliberate time set aside um, Mm -hmm. that that's a meeting that should always be recurring. Um, And the other thing to get into marriage prep mode here um, Family meetings, especially meetings between spouses, um, should be a scheduled <laughs> recurring meeting. Right. Um, and the main reason I say that is because the um, husband hearing, we need to talk <laughs> versus, <laughs> <never good. laughs> versus, hey, it's the second Wednesday of the month and we meet. It's right. It's a lot right. better to hear. Yes. We need to talk is never a good thing. <laughs> Always put dates on the calendar. Dates like going out on dates or yeah. cooking mm-hmm. together. That's a- <laughs> yes, I have a recurring. That, that is a meeting. Yes, to have recurring. <laughs> yes, yes, I have a recurring meeting with my wife every week. We do a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's we. And when the podcast is over, we often sit and talk about things that we need to talk about anyway. So uh, that's our recurring meeting. Uh, the article says that employees spend about eighteen hours a week on average in meetings. Eighteen out of 35 working hours, just like considering you get, you know, an hour of lunch a week, 18. That's, that's half. That's half of your time spent in meetings. Now, uh, a lot of people work more than 35 hours a week, but still it's it's crazy. So imagine just if you're paying that person $20 an hour, right? That's a lot of money to sit around and do something that's sitting in a meeting Sitting in a meeting. We're and so, not getting anything done. Right. So think about this. So Ch- Shopify is saying this. So in a week, right, 18, 20, right, we're talking $400 or so. Per employee. <laughs> per employee. If that, if that employee is just making 20. At 20 bucks an hour. Right. Then they're which not. is a pretty <laughs> mid-level employee right now. Yeah, that's pretty low for a, a tech company like that. Yeah. And so, you know, you're talking... Per employee, five hundred to a thousand dollars on meetings. And you think um, about it: if there's more than two employees in a meeting, the everyone like most of the people in that meeting are basically biding their time until it's their turn to talk, like in, until mm-hmm. they have something that's relevant to them. For most people in meetings, much of the meeting is spent waiting to for something relevant to apply to them. So, yeah, I I agree. I agree with with that. But salary employees can have as many meetings as they want. <laughs> just, get, just kidding. Just kidding. Yes. So uh, our next headline is interesting. I'll see if you, I, how you guys feel about whether you'd be a potential customer for this service. This new app wants to pay you to share your data to advertisers. So Caden, C-A-D-E-N, has looked at the current trend of privacy, especially like with Apple turning off the uh, spigots on our data, our private data, and they're saying, look, how about if people opt in and we'll pay them to share their private data, the things that they do, the places they shop, the kinds of things they buy to people who want, the companies that want to buy it. And then we'll give some of that money to you and you can make five, fifty, a $100 a month, depending on how much data you give. What do you guys think of this? I mean, if people go into it with eyes wide open, is it okay? <laughs> Father, you, you, you're uh, shaking your head. Uh, <laughs> is this just for you or well, do you think it's a bad idea in general? The, yeah. The, <laughs> <laughs> that says it all. <laughs> yeah, I can't even put words to it right now. It's just you're, se- you're selling yourself. Um, and yeah. that's not good. What do you think, Thomas? I, 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 if they were actually buying something, like if there were, if there were a give and take here, it might be reasonable, but it feels like it's just, well, you're going to have this happen anyway. Let's just go ahead and admit that you're the commodity and we're going to lowball you as far as we can. Cause there's no way they're giving you 
anywhere near the amount of money that they're going to make off of selling your data. Right. And you hit on the key of this, that we can tie it in with the Catholic social teaching thing, right? That the moment the human person becomes the good, right? Not Mm -hmm. the the good and something good, but the product, Yes. right? The moment we have become the product, then there's something that is distorted and evil about that, right? And Mm -hmm. it's not focused towards the human person anymore. It's focused towards the person serving capitalism, right? Instead Mm -hmm. of capitalism being at service of the human person. But there's nothing wrong with advertising per se, that we, in which case, you know, the eyeballs, the attention of the consumer is the product they were, we're looking to, to, to buy as an advertiser. So there's nothing really wrong with advertising, but it's, it's, this goes over the line to, I want to know about all I can about you in all the private ways I possibly morally, ethically, and legally can do it. And maybe sometimes in the gray areas of that right. <laughs> um, and find out. And, and then I want that information. Um, and I, and frankly, a lot of these, they don't really need all this information. It's, yeah. it's better. I mean, they can more target things. They can make more money if they have this information, but because, you know, they made companies made tons of money without having all this, pro, in, this personal information in the past. Um, so it feels icky. And even though I, I agree, even though people would be opting in and getting paid, gosh, it feels kind of like, I don't, I don't want to go there, but you know what it feels like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and I'll give you, I'll give you the, the alternative solution here. The, 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 another site that I've used that I like that I will go to occasionally, it's called respondent.io. Um, it's a, it's a really great site that's basically, um, marketing, uh, research and they just need people to answer questions. And so what you do is you go and you create a a profile on respondent.io and it, you know, you fill in some information about yourself and then marketing people who are doing research about something will find you based on your particular, uh, you know, background, what your employment is, something like that. And then they will pay you to sit with them and spend some time doing an interview. And it's really great. Like, I mean, the, the return is really good. Sometimes you get actually really interesting things that you're talking about. Uh, you know, when I was, mm-hmm. when I was a teacher and doing this, I uh, found out about a co- couple of really great apps and got to really question how they were making decisions about the way they were putting them together and give them feedback about what I would like to see as a teacher. Um, and I got paid to do it. And so, you know, it was, it was paid for my time. Uh, and not just my and and for my opinion, but not for like this just like creepy spy over my shoulder thing. Right. I think that's the difference. It's not so much like it's one thing to to pay me for the intellectual product that I can offer you, which is my opinion, my ideas, my thoughts, um, or what I choose to share with you verbally. Like I I like this kind of store. I like that kind of thing. Whatever. But it's different from selling you access to peep into my life, like to, to be a little peeping Tom on my shoulder to all the things I do and see and experience. Yeah. And then also remember that this data, we're not just trying to sell you something, um, but often we're trying to manipulate you and change your mind and things as well. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think of like, Right. We had the whole scandal of Cambridge and Analytica. We have the Facebook, Russian, whatnot. Right. Right. Whatever that is. The psychological manipulation thing about making people depressed. Yeah. Yep. There's still a fact. Okay. Yeah. And Instagram that you have attacking young girls body image over and over and over again. Right. Right. You're you're manipulating people's minds to use your product. Right. Mm -hmm. More. Um, and so I'm getting that data as Facebook or as Instagram, and I'm using that data to change my algorithm in a which a way that I can make mm-hmm. people become more addicted to my product. Right. And so there's this really sick and perverted way in which you have become the product, right? Mm-hmm. And, yeah. that, and that 
Yeah. And that's why that just sits so <laughs> uneasy with me is anytime we can give people, you're giving people an opportunity then to delve in deeper to the human psyche on how their data is being done right? Um, with consent. And that just seems like it's going to get even uglier. Right. So I think we're in agreement. No <laughs> to, to this. Uh, yeah. So that's good. All right. Uh, so those are our headlines this week. And uh, we would love to hear your opinion of, of any of that. So you, know, you can let us know what you think. Let's move on to our picks of the week. Father, your pick uh, is first up. Okay, my pick for this week, um, I'm going to go on the educational line here now. Um, it's a product called Tinkercad. And so it's um, computer-aided drafting software that's online that's free. Um, but it's especially um, slated towards education, especially um, junior high to high school age, um, in which it has tutorials that teach them how to do the computer aided drafting, um, all the way to designing things, um, and then allows you and can give you the files to export that if you need to do 3D printing or anything like that. Um, you're able to use the files of Tinkercad. Um, if I were to use regular computer aided aiding drafting software and have to purchase those licenses for my school, we're talking thousands of dollars, mm -hmm. right? And so we have used this software to have kids design things to do 3D printing. Um, and I just love it. It's, um, and I've used it to design stuff on my own as, a, as an adult. So there's um, a lot to it that's really good. Great program, definitely from a, from a fellow 3D printer here. That's um, absolutely a wonderful program my my sons got started on it they were they actually were bringing me stuff from tinkercad to print on my printer uh before i taught them blender uh and, and it was i i didn't even i i, I had shown them how to use it and they mm -hmm. went and grabbed it on their own and started making things and said dad print this for me dad go go print this for me <laughs> <laughs> so this i had awesome. kid i had kids one year design bridges so instead of doing like the popsicle stick bridges. Yeah. We actually did design bridges. Actually, they did their popsicle stick ones first. And then we used those same designs and we had them um, initially do the popsicle stick design on the Tinkercad, right? And then we printed them out as well. Um, and it was really cool to show them how much sturdier, right, these 3D print designs could be then mm -hmm. um we also i did um a couple of them we printed with different material to show them differences of strength and material and whatnot so cool and it's a web app so it's, it's you know there's no mm -hmm. software to download correct is is it free is it cost money it is free nice mm -hmm. And as as an adult or uh, as a parent or a teacher you can you can log in and have your kids store stuff and check it in with you as well so mm -hmm. there, there's some back-end teachery stuff that you can do so you can let them do an assignment and they can show it share it with you so that you can see the the 3d design that they've put together oh. uh, and there are some community parts to it too where uh people who have created things have shared them out and you can go and look at their designs see how they built it uh and and when you pull the design in you can pull it apart if it's if it's still in that structure you can actually pull yeah. the pieces apart and see which base shapes they used and uh learn from the way that they put things together it's pretty impressive and it can teach elements of geometry teach elements of physics all of yeah. that using <laughs> engineering using it <laughs> yep your engineering yep. absolutely my uh 11 year old son is probably going to be very interested in this so i'm going to check it out for him that's awesome I like it. Excellent. Thomas, what's your pick? So mine is um, a combination pick. Uh, if you are a person who's been on YouTube for any length of time and you have particular creators that you follow, you have probably heard of Nebula.tv, which is the platform that a lot of YouTube content creators are moving to uh, just to get away from kind of the draconian things that YouTube is doing to limit the amount of money that they can make on the platform. And uh, I resisted 
getting it for a while because I was like, oh, I don't want to pay for a <laughs> subscription service when YouTube's still there. Right. <laughs> but it's worth it. It really is. And right now, uh, and, and for a little while, I didn't realize this, but there's this other program called Curiosity Stream that is running a bundled deal and you can get uh curiosity stream nebula tv uh, a couple of other of uh curiosity streams offerings which are like a, a, a university style uh classes that you can take and then a kid's uh exploration sort of sciencey uh channel uh you get them all bundled up and then you have subscription access to all these things and i was like curiosity stream was the one we got first even before we realized that there was a bundle for it and it's cool it's like these little offbeat sort of um uh biopics or history or natural sciences uh things that aren't going to make it on the big networks because they're just not they're not polished enough right but they have good information and it's my kids love them my kids will sit down and watch them and they don't need they don't need to have the realistic looking dinosaur just that it's shaped like a dinosaur and it's moving around <laughs> yeah. on the screen yeah. and it's explaining the actual paleontology behind it is really right. neat my dad has had a subscription to this for several years now and really enjoys it um you mm -hmm. know every time they my mother and him go through the um subscriptions and she tries to convince them of what we, what they need to cancel right um <laughs> this one gets heavy defended on the docket so good yep yeah, i wholeheartedly agree so the premium is for, you get you get a 4k stream and you this is the one where you also get the bundle to nebula taste made right. and da vinci kids and one day university etc um and that's 70 bucks a year which you know when you look at w whether it's y the youtube premium cost or even mm -hmm. like a, a, a standard streaming service like disney plus or whatever that's pretty darn competitive and you yeah know, you, like you said you get a and lot of access stuff. yeah and and i will say nebula is really nebula is interesting because the the feel of the videos is very different from youtube and it's the same creators same content creators but they've they've kind of learned what works on the youtube algorithm and uh -huh. they make their content based on that whereas on Nebula, they get to do their thing and right. they get to make the videos that they want to make. And so it changes the tone a little bit. And so there's a few that I like, like Adam Neely, who's a, a musician uh, that I follow on YouTube. Uh, his stuff's really good. His stuff is very polished on YouTube. And he has this much more laid back kind of uh, stream of consciousness sort of flow to what he's doing on Nebula. And so it feels a lot more like you're in, just sitting in the room with him and having a conversation. YouTube really punishes you if you're not the, if you don't do the algorithm friendly thing. Mm -hmm. um, so you, and so where, you know, if, if, if you just can kind of have a little more freedom, you can, you, you can have a much more interesting uh, videos perhaps. Yeah. I, I agree. Yeah. Um, I like uh, Rene Ritchie, who's uh, in the tech space, and he's got several different channels I see here mm -hmm. on Nebula, yep. and uh, uh, it'll be interesting to see. Oh, so good. That's a good one. So my pick of the week is a tip of the week, and this is one for you Apple Watch users. If you have an Apple Watch, uh, go to the Watch app on your phone, On your uh, if you have an iPhone, and in the settings, there's a place called uh, Emergency SOS. So when you tap on that and you scroll all the way down and you see Emergency Contacts, if you fall when you're wearing your app or you have a crash, if you have crash detection, uh, your, your watch will offer to call emergency services. If you've put an emergency contact in here, you could also have it call them. And it will try each one in, in order, I think. So I have my wife and then my two brothers because <laughs> they're local to me uh, listed here. You, you put the contacts in the health app and it will, there's a link to the health app to, to put those in. Uh, these are your medical emergency contacts. But uh, put it in the Apple Watch app so that if you get in an accident, you have a problem, you, you're riding your bike, you're walking on the street, you get hit by a car. If it calls emergency, emergency it'll not only will call 911 or whatever your local 999 or 000, whatever your, whatever country you're in, um, it will call your emergency contact too. So um, definitely fill that out. That is a very important safety tip for you. 
So you want them to know right away uh, as soon as you can. Excellent. Oh, and if, if you have an elderly parent who you've given an Apple watch to for fall protection, put your information in there for them mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. you can come and help them. Uh, there was a podcast I was listening to his elderly mother fell in the garage. He got a message on his phone that uh, she had had a fall. He called. She didn't answer. He went over. Yeah. She was in the garage laying on the cold garage floor. He, she would have been there all night perhaps and died mm -hmm. because you know, the hypothermia um, if uh, he, if he didn't get that message and gone over. So uh, potentially saved her life. So that's, re that's really positive stuff of yes. technology there. Yep. Yep. I don't know if it'll be in an Apple keynote in the future, but uh, you know, that particular instance, but others like it have been mentioned. So uh, technology is, can do good. <laughs> All right. That's it for us this time. We'd like to uh, ask you to, Give us your opinion of anything we've talked about, or if you had questions on things we've discussed, we'd love to hear from you. You can do that at sqpn.com slash technology or the StarQuest Facebook page at facebook.com slash StarQuest Media. Send an email to technology at sqpn.com. Visit the StarQuest Discord community at sqpn.com slash discord. And you can find links from our discussion and our picks of the week on our show notes on starquest.fm slash T E C 197. That's the show number. Tech 197. Follow the Secrets of Tech in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, your favorite podcast app, or at our YouTube channel where you should make sure to hit the bell to get notifications. We'd like to thank James for his research assistance in this episode. And until next time, Thomas and Ho, thank you for joining me and sharing the Secrets of Technology. It's been great. Father Joseph Sun, thank you as well. Thank you as well. And once again, I'm Dom Bettinelli. Thank you for listening to The Secrets of Technology on StarQuest. Quest.